I'm Ron Rash. Uh, I'm the writer of four books that have been published by text, and I wanted to talk just a moment about my novel, Serena. Uh, the novel is set in the Appalachian Mountains uh, around 1930, and one of the uh, things I found most interesting as I began the book was the character of Serena Pemberton, a woman who is very strong, very unusual, particularly for this time period. And I wanted the reader to have a sense of her strength, fearlessness, uh, and power from the very beginning of the novel. So I'm going to read the opening where we get our first glimpse of her. When Pemberton returned to the North Carolina mountains after three months in Boston, settling his father's estate, among those waiting on the train platform was a young woman pregnant with Pemberton's child. She was accompanied by her father, who carried beneath his shabby frock coat a bowie knife sharpened with great attentiveness earlier that morning, so it would plunge as deep as possible into Pemberton's heart. The conductor shouted Waynesville as the train shuddered to a halt. Pemberton looked out the window and saw his partners on the platform, both dressed in suits to meet his bride of two days, an unexpected bonus from his time in Boston. Buchanan, ever the dandy, had waxed his mustache and oiled his hair. His polished bluchers gleamed, the white cotton dress, shirt fresh pressed. Wilkie wore a gray fedora, as he often did to protect his bald pate from the sun. A Princeton Phi Beta Kappa key glinted on the older man's watch fob, a blue silk handkerchief tucked in his breast pocket. Pemberton opened the gold shell of his watch and found the train on time to the exact minute. He turned to his bride who'd been napping. Serena's dreams had been especially troubling last night. Twice he'd had to wake her by her thrashing, her fierce latching onto him until she'd fallen back asleep. He kissed her lightly on the lips and she awoke. Not the best place for a honeymoon. It suits us well enough, Serena said, leaning into his shoulder. We're here together, that's all that matters. Pemberton inhaled the bright aroma of treasure talcum and remembered how he'd not just smelled but tasted its vividness on her skin earlier that morning. A porter strolled up the aisle whistling a song Pemberton didn't recognize. His gaze returned to the window. Next to the ticket booth, Harmon and his daughter waited. Harmon slouching against the chestnut board wall. It struck Pemberton that men in these mountains rarely stood upright. Instead, they leaned into some tree or wall whenever possible. If none was available, they squatted buttocks against the backs of their heels. Harmon held a pint jar in his hand, what remained of its contents barely covering the bottom. The daughter sat on the bench, her posture upright to better reveal her condition. Pemberton could not recall her first name. He wasn't surprised to see them or that the girls with child. His child, Pemberton had learned the night before. Pemberton and Serena left, for Boston, left Boston. Abe Harmon's down here saying he has business to settle with you. Business about his daughter, Buchanan had said when he called. It could be just drunken bluster, but I thought you ought to know. Our welcoming party includes some of the locals, Pemberton said to his bride. As we were led to expect, Serena said. The porter set the trunk on the platform. Pemberton gave the man a quarter and dismissed him. Serena looked over at the father and daughter, who now sat on the bench together, watchful and silent as actors awaiting their cues. I don't know you, Serena said. The daughter continued to stare sullenly at Serena. It was the father who spoke, his voice slurred. My business ain't with you. It's with him there standing beside you. This business is mine, Serena said, just as mine as his. Harmon nodded at his daughter's belly, then turned back to Serena. Not this business. It was done before you got here. You're implying that she's carrying my husband's child. I ain't implying nothing, Harmon said. You're a lucky man then, Serena said to Harmon. You'll not find a better sire to breed him with. The size of her belly attests to that. 
Serena turned her gaze and words to the daughter. But that's the only one you'll have of his. I'm here now. Any other children he has will be with me.